This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Do I look manly with my ladder, my drill, and my bat house? Yes, that's a bat house. And we're gonna try to attract bats to the garden so they'll eat the mosquitoes. Well, I've always wanted a bat house, and I guess you can look at it kind of like a bird house. It should be 12 to 15 feet tall, facing the south, in the sun if possible. That's not possible here. Uh, around some water. There's a pool behind you. That's as close as I can come. But I've got a few bats around, but I want to attract a colony because each bat, believe it or not, eats 650 mosquitoes an hour. That's a good thing for the garden. A bat won't bother you. They won't hurt you. You remember the old Andy Griffith show? <laughs> Barney Fife was in the cave and didn't want to get the bats in his, in his hair. I put a couple screws in here and I'm going to finish up with this one here and we're going to move on out of the garden. And there's actually <laughs> something out here the deer are eating that I'm happy about. Another reason we're trying to help the bats is they're in trouble. They're battling a disease and losing habitat. Now look at this. The deer are eating pokeweed. <laughs> one thing that we, we agree, hey, good, good job. <laughs> stay in the pokeweed, stay out of the garden. Well, we're gonna have some fun in the vegetable garden. These are called bloom bags. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. You can see the spelling. And what I love about these containers, the drainage is already in them. They're lightweight and they fold flat at the end of the season. This is gonna be a fun experiment. This is a strawberry pot made out of fabric and all the materials used to make this are recycled. It's basically recycled water bottles and that's a good thing. So let's fill them up and have some fun and we got lots of stuff to plant. Well, first off, check out these golden beets we planted last week. They're all sprouting, that's awesome. I love these things because they take so much compost. That's three full bags of compost. And we always talk about containers. Bigger is better. It, you don't need as much water. And since we've had so many critter problems, I'm gonna try growing some of these beets and lettuce up a little bit to keep them away from the rabbits especially. And I really think this is gonna work nice. If I don't like where this is, it is. It's so lightweight I could move it. This is a variety called Early Wonder, which makes sense to plant it late in the season because it will form a, a root pretty quickly. And up here, no rabbits can get to those greens. <laughs> well, you know, I love to continue planting, but I don't want to put anything in the ground that the pests are gonna get. And so I was at the nursery and I found bunching onions and that's a great cool weather crop. So they're gonna start now and go all the way into the winter. I have a heck of a time growing like big onions. I just don't have the sun, but these bunching onions, I think will be perfect in this compost and you can't go wrong with onions. Nothing wants to eat onions except me. Well, we always talk about anything newly planted needs water right away. And of course it's been very hot and dry. And so we've been watering all our other plants in the garden, but there are two wonderful plants that come back every year that don't need anything from us. And I wanna show those to you next. I love this plant. It's Ligularia Brit Marie Crawford. It has had no fertilization, no water, and look at it go. It's not a one trick pony though. It has beautiful foliage and look at these purple stems. They're amazing. Another plant that doesn't need anything from us is this anemone Queen Charlotte. And there's lots of different varieties, white ones, purple ones, tall ones and short ones. They call it the wind flower because it dances in the wind. And I just love them. It's not a one trick pony either. It has beautiful buds, then the flowers and then pretty little white seed heads. Now I got one more thing to show you before we finish up. Well, you might be tired of my obsession with bargains, but I was speaking at Bedner's Nursery over the weekend, and this Japanese maple called Biho, I think that's how you pronounce it, was only $50, because you can see it's, it's stressed, but I talked to Russ Bedner, he said, no problem, it's gonna come back. This plant at this size for $50 is the best bargain you're ever gonna get. When this plant leaves out, you'll get chartreuse leaves that are red edged, they'll eventually turn to green, but the star is this bark, which is gonna turn orange in the winter. Now, 
since it is so hot and there isn't a lot of rain coming, I'm just keeping it here in the shade, watering it every other day, giving it a little break from the sun, and then we'll put it in the ground maybe next week, maybe the week after that for our video. All right, let's finish up. Well, the prizes keep stacking up for our September 4th Everybody Garden Symposium. Not only do we have that big rotating composting pile, we've got these bloom bags, which Jasmine says are too pretty to put compost in. That's quite a testimonial. I've got a case of Bob X deer repellent to give away to. The only way that you can become part of that symposium is to join my exclusive garden club called Everybody Gardens. You get six issues of my newsletter, a t-shirt, special seeds, and more. You can find all about it online until next week. I'm going to be out in the garden watering, that's for sure. We'll see you then.